we've got another month of decreased sales, increased housing inventory, and lower average prices in the Edmonton real estate market. How bad is it really? Is it just a seasonal adjustment as we get into the summer months? Or is there something else going on here? Maybe it's due to a shifting real estate market in response to increased interest rates and fears of recession. Plus, we're seeing headlines uh, coming out of Ontario, Toronto, and even talking about the Canadian real estate market as a whole that could seem quite negative. For example, I just read an article in the Financial Post that said the number of home sales had dropped by 41% in the Toronto Real Estate Board in June of this year compared to June of last year. That's a pretty substantial drop in sales volume. And with scary headlines like this, you might be wondering what's happening in Edmonton. Is it the same type of thing? 41% drop would be pretty crazy. Well, without getting into that right now, I wanna let you know that it's not nearly as bad in Edmonton, as you'll find out in the rest of this video. We'll be covering that, as well as a whole bunch of other things, including what's going on in the market as a whole in Edmonton, what's going on in the single family detached market, and what's going on in the condo market. So depending on what type of property you're looking at buying or selling, each one of those segments is gonna be really important to you. So let's jump right in. Okay, so starting with the Edmonton real estate market as a whole, this is gonna include everything in Edmonton, in both single family homes, condos, townhouses, duplexes, apartments. It's all mashed together, everything that's residential. Uh, if we look at the market, you can see that we were sitting uh, for the month of June, that's the most recent statistics available from the Realtors Association of Edmonton. It's just all the stats uh, from the month of June. We are in July now, but we're looking at the most recent stats available. And the absorption rate for June for the whole market was 28.55%, which actually puts it just into a buyer's market. Uh, last month, we were still in a balanced market. If you look at the 13-month history here, you can see in May we were at a 37% absorption rate, which put us uh, almost in the middle of a balanced market overall. But now we've dropped under that 30% threshold, so we're now technically in a buyer's market for the market as a whole. Of course, you can't just apply that to any property type in any neighborhood. Um, and certain parts of the market, like condos, are, are definitely dragging the rest of the market down a lot. But if you're just looking at it as a whole, it, there's still been a pretty significant shift, considering that back in February, we had a, that's when the seller's market started, when we were at 52% uh, listing absorption rate, we were, so we were sitting just into a seller's market. Then in March, it jumped all the way up to 70% absorption rate, so it was a pretty strong seller's market. And then it really started to pull back a lot in April, and it's continued to pull back until we've gotten all the way down to 28% absorption rate. So we saw two big shifts in the market. First, a quick ramp up uh, into a seller's market, and now a pretty quick ramp down. Uh, and that's pretty unprecedented. Usually real estate moves pretty slowly. It's not supposed to be like the stock market uh, where you, things can move really quickly. Um, so this is pretty unfamiliar territory uh, for the housing market to see it shift that often. Now, if we look at the average prices uh, for the market as a whole in June, it was sitting at $402,593, which was down 1.01% from last month, but up 0.97% from last year. Uh, so that's something that's important to take a look at. Uh, we're still technically up for the year, even though we're looking at the whole market. The numbers are way different if you're looking at condos versus single family homes, as we'll get to later. But the market as a whole is just barely up a percent from last year, uh, in terms of average prices at least. If you look over at the 13 month history, we did get a pretty big uh, jump in February. Then it kind of stayed relatively flat, uh, you know, down 0.21%, then up 0.9% in April. Then it went down 1.61% in May and then down another percent in June. Now, if we just look at the average price trend on a yearly basis instead of just the monthly change, you can see that we were up almost 1% in 2020, then we were up 6.86% in 2021, and so far for the year, we're up 4.73%. Uh, so since we've been seeing some drops the last couple months in the average price, that's starting to drag down uh, how much we're up for the year since we got big gains near the beginning of the year and now it's kind of pulling back a little bit. Now if we go and actually look at the active listings and the sold listings, at the end of June we had 6,423 active listings and 1,834 sales. So the number of active listings is up just over 20% from May uh, 2022, uh, but still down a little bit, 1.38% from June of 2021. Whereas the number of sales are down 7.33% from May 2022 and down 3.37% from June 2021. So this is where I want to pay, uh, bring your attention to this. Even though we're seeing some negative numbers in terms of sales volume, if you remember what I said about Toronto, I think it was down 
41% from June of last year. Now, if you compare that to uh, our market in Edmonton, the sales volume being down only 3.37% from June of last year, that is not nearly as big of a shift as what they've been seeing in Toronto. And last year was actually a pretty strong year for Edmonton. It was a great year, even though, you know, we have a little, little less sales than we did last year in June, we had 1,898. Now we have 1,834. I would consider that pretty comparable. Plus in June of last year, we, we had an inventory of 6,513. And now we have an inventory of 6,423. So it's pretty dang comparable to where it was at last year. And not a whole lot of people were complaining last year. It was a strong market all year until we got into the fall. And, and even then it was still strong for fall months. Uh, it was a lot of seasonal change there. So Edmonton's still doing pretty good, even though we've seen a big shift. Um, we're not getting murdered <laughs> like they are in the Toronto real estate market. And I think that really speaks to our affordability in Edmonton. I don't think our market is as vulnerable uh, to some of these big uh, changes in the interest rates because our market is more affordable. Whereas if you're in Toronto and you're having to buy something that's over a million bucks, it starts to really make a big difference when your interest rates go up one or two percent. Whereas here, our, our houses never really got really highly inflated like that. So I think uh, as a whole, Edmonton is going to perform much differently compared to uh, the rest of Canada, or I should say Alberta is going to perform much differently compared to the rest of Canada. Um, that doesn't mean that we're immune to having some shifts in the market, as you can see just from the quick run up uh, going into February and March, and then now kind of the quick rundown. Um, th this will continue to play out in the market, but we're not seeing as dramatic of a hit as what uh, has been happening in Toronto. Time will tell to see how badly we get hit or if we you know get out relatively unscathed but that is something that i think is really important to keep top of mind because headlines sell right so a lot of articles from economists or newspapers they talk about the canadian real estate market as a whole and it's going to be really misleading because if if you just knowing what i told you now sales are down 41 percent in, in toronto versus being down 3.37 percent in edmonton now, if someone talks about the Canadian real estate market as a whole, which is going to be a lot more influenced by big markets like Toronto and Vancouver than it is from little old Edmonton, uh, Edmonton kind of gets uh, covered up in those stats. It's not going to be a significant portion. Uh, so what they're saying about Canada as a whole can make it seem like things are a lot worse in Edmonton than they probably will be just because we're not as sensitive. Uh, we, like I said, we didn't get inflated as much as these other markets. We were just starting to get going and then, then they started raising interest rates aggressively and uh, kind of took the, took the steam out of it. So I think we're a lot better positioned there. I don't think you have to be nearly as nervous in Edmonton about falling home prices as you do in uh, many other parts of Canada. So let's keep going with this. Uh, I think I forgot to mention, but you can get copies of all these reports uh, if you look in the link below in the description, you can click on that and you can download a copy of this PDF report for your own reference. So let's keep going here. Now let's look at days on market. So the market as a whole was sitting at 35 days on average, uh, which is up. So they're selling 16.67% slower compared to May when we were at 30 days. So the market, the days on market is starting to creep up. So that's part of the market shifting. 35 days on market is still very strong though. Like if you look at last year, in June, it was 37, July it was 39, 43 in August, 45 in September, and then it kind of kept creeping up as you got into the winter months and then started to come down in uh, once we got into the new year going into the spring. So still very robust, just not crazy like it was before. Now, if we look at the, the market distribution, this is looking at the market as a whole and at what price brackets the activity happens at. So you can see just over 15% of the market is under that, two, under that $200,000 range. Another 15% essentially is between two and 300,000. And you're looking at 24.11% uh, between three and 400,000. Now, if you look between four and 500,000, you've got another 20.53% of the market. Um, and this is also important to look, out, like, look at as well. You're not gonna see th the same type of market distribution if you look in Toronto or Vancouver. Uh, if we add this up, you know, 30% of our market is under 300,000, another 20, call it 25. Uh, between three and four. So that's like 55% of the market is under 400,000. Uh, then you've got another 20%, uh, just over 20% uh, under 500,000. So that's like basically, yeah, 75% of the market, unless I'm doing my math wrong, I'm on the spot here. So that's still a lot more affordable than uh, 
stuff that's you know a million like you're, what you're going to see in a lot of other markets i do think as interest rates rise we will see that shift more and more to the left so that the house prices that are going to be more vulnerable are going to be those higher priced units because uh, they're going to get more expensive to get into uh, but that's just something to kind of help put things in perspective compared to other markets across canada now let's look at single family homes. But before we do that, I do want to remind you that this gives you a good sort of overall view of what's going on in the Edmonton real estate market. Uh, but I am a licensed real estate agent here in Edmonton with Yeg Pro Realty. And I'd love to help you whether you're looking at buying or selling a property in Edmonton or the surrounding communities around Edmonton, whether it's Beaumont, Leduc, uh, rural property like in Parkland County or Leduc County, I can help you every, everywhere around Edmonton. And I can also give you a lot more pointed and specific advice based on your situation. After I get the details of what you're looking for, your price range uh, or what, what what you have to sell and that kind of thing and I can give you a lot better advice than than what you can get from a video like this where I can only really talk generally about the market so if that is interest uh, an interest to you I encourage you to reach out to me at 780-819-5508 you can either call me or text me at that number or you can email me at trevor at trevortardiff.com or go to booktrevornow.com select the time on my calendar and then I will call you so I won't go on any more about that for now, but let's look at the single family home market. The listing absorption rate for the single family home market was sitting at 29.81% for the month of June, which again, just puts it right on that cusp between a balanced and a buyer's market. It was clearly in a balanced market before. If we look at the last 13 months, in May, we were sitting at 38%, uh, which was kind of almost square in the middle of a balanced market, whereas just the month before in April, we were sitting at 50%, which was right on that cusp of a balanced in sellers. And then in March, we were sitting at 88.5%, which was a super strong seller's market, and about 75% in February. Again, I just want to point out how unprecedented those shifts in the market are. Going from December, we were sitting at, you know, right where we are right now, pretty much on the cusp of a buyer slash uh, balanced market. Then we jumped up uh, right into the middle of the balanced market. And then the next move brought us, you know, right into the middle of a seller's market. And the next move brought us into an even stronger seller's market. And it's like, we're, we're jumping halfway between buyers, balanced and seller's markets at each month, at, which is a pretty big swing. So obviously if we continue to see that happening, then it probably is going to shift into a buyer's market um, as we get further into the fall, unless something changes, uh, the Bank of Canada is uh, probably gonna keep raising interest rates. Uh, a lot of people would be shocked if they didn't. It is having a big impact on the market. So what, what does that mean for you if you're buying or selling? Well, if you're selling, you may have gotten excited about what you heard in the news earlier this year about prices going up and all that kind of thing. Um, you should probably start to lower your expectations or realize that we're not in a situation where we're seeing upward pressure in prices anymore for the most part. Uh, you're going to have to be realistic in how you list your property. You gotta make sure you list it right because if market uh, prices do start to slide, you don't wanna be chasing that market. You wanna be proactive and price it right from the beginning. Make sure you got your marketing dialed in. Uh, I always like to do full blown video walkthrough tours plus professional photography plus floor plans for all my listings just to make it so that everybody that's looking at your property can see it in its best light. Those things get really important, uh, especially as the market gets more competitive for sellers. Uh, now, if you're a buyer, on the other hand, it definitely has taken a lot of the stress out of the market. If we look at the inventory, which we'll be looking at uh, next here, you have, a, you have more to choose from than you did earlier in the year, and now you're not seeing the ramping up of prices anymore. Like the, the prices are still up, uh, and, and we might begin to start to see some of them uh, slide a little bit, uh, but again, that takes time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be expecting like really quick drops in prices especially considering we still have good uh, activity right now. And, and, and always remember, sellers are stubborn. Just because you want the market to drop and you want a lower price doesn't mean sellers will automatically be willing or able uh, to accept that. But the trade-off is, and I've talked about this in some of my other videos, uh, if you want to check it out, I got one about you know buy now or wait for the market to drop. And I kind of compare the numbers on buying now at today's interest rates versus seeing what happens if the market drops at a higher interest rate. And the choice on what's better might not be as obvious as you think it is. So um, I'll put a link to that video, you can check that out. But basically, prices might go down a bit, but your interest rate might also get higher the longer you wait. So there's an incentive still to potentially, especially if you have a rate hold, to maybe buy something now uh, with a good locked in rate that you have 
Uh, otherwise, even if prices go down a little bit, if you're paying a higher interest rate, uh, are you really saving money anyway? <laughs> so something to keep in mind, especially since Edmonton, like I said, I don't think as it, as vulnerable to uh, a big uh, correction in prices like I think could happen in, in Toronto uh, in the Vancouver area. So let's keep going here. Average price for single family homes was sitting at $503,427, which was up 0.81% for May. So average prices actually were up a little bit uh, from, from last month, but we did have a drop in May. Uh, and it's up 2.65% from June, 2021. Again, in, it's interesting. Uh, it is the average price, so it does get affected by what's selling. And I've said this before in other videos, I do think as interest rates go up, we're gonna see people wanting to be in a lower price bracket just because they don't want their uh, payments to be any higher. So somebody that might've bought a $550,000 house, maybe they're gonna buy a $450,000 house now. And somebody that was gonna buy a $450,000 house, maybe they're gonna buy a $400,000 or a $350,000 property. Uh, and that will start to drag down the average price and the median price even if that's not the real change in the value of the properties. It just could mean that there's just more sales volume happening at a lower price point. So uh, it's a little iffy looking at only the average price, and only, only the median price. I like to look at the benchmark price for that um, as well. Uh, now, if we look at the market as a whole, you can see in 2022, we're up 6.66% for detached homes. And last year we were up 7.66%. So we, it is starting to eat into that a little bit since we haven't been getting uh, as many gains as like what we had in February when we were up 11.26%. Okay, so let's look at the active and sold. So we had, at the end of June, we had 3,402 active single family home listings and 1,014 sales. So the number of active listings is also up almost 15% from May and up a little bit from last year, up 3.75% from last year. So that inventory problem that we had has really shifted a lot. Uh, and the number of sales is down 10.66% from last month and down 706 from June of last year. So uh, the sales volume is down a little bit more for single family homes than it is for the market as a whole. So that, that little bit uh, more of a shift in the single family home market. And again, this is just looking at the balance of listings and sales, us sitting at 3,402 3, active listings and 1,014 sales. You can see that that's still relatively comparable to the number of sales we had last year, but our inventory is actually up for single family homes compared to where we were at last year. And if you look at that compared to what the madness that was going on in February and March, we've more than doubled our inventory and our sales volume has dropped. Uh, in February, we actually had a thousand sales. So we have a few more sales in June than we did in February. And February felt pretty insane. Uh, and that was because we only had 1,343 listings at the end of the month versus 3,402. So that's what can cause the market to feel really different, even if you still have strong sales volume. A lot of people put their properties on the market, so there's a lot more to choose from takes a lot of the stress out of the market for buyers. If we look at the average days on market for single family homes, that was sitting at 29 days in June, which is up. Uh, so that's, that's actually 26% slower compared to May when we had 23 days. And it's the same as where we were at last year in June. So again, last year in June, it was still a good market. Um, as we got into the summer months last year, if it ends up being a bit of a repeat of last year, uh, you might miss out on some of the, the highs that we saw uh, earlier in the year. Uh, but it was still a strong market going through the summer. Uh, you just had to be realistic on how you priced your property. So 29 days on market still moving pretty good. Obviously that can continue to change if the market keeps shifting. Now the price distribution on single family homes, you can see it's much different uh, compared to the market as a whole with just over 1% under 200,000, um, about 7% between two and 300,000 and 23.66% between three and 400,000. And then that four to 500,000 range is the biggest chunk of the single family home market at 27.92%. Uh, then we're sitting at just over 18% between five and, and 600,000 and about just over 10% between six and seven, just over 5% between seven and eight. And it really starts to go down from there. So I do think we're gonna continue to see a lot of our action between that three and $500,000 price point. It's really hard to see houses getting under that $300,000 price point. There's not a whole lot in there. Uh, but that's where a lot of buyers are going to want are going to want to be. And so that is going to be the more competitive part of the market. Whereas if you're, you know, up in the fives or the sixes or the sevens, you're probably not going to have as many buyers. 
and you're less likely to get into a multiple offer situation. So it gets more important, more, even more important to price your property properly. Uh, but even with everything I've been saying about the single family home market, let's say you're trying to find something for 350,000 and you need to have like four or five bedrooms or something like that. I can tell you right now that's very competitive market still. And don't be surprised if the properties you want, a bunch of other people still want them too. And those could still go over list price. So uh, that's where it gets important to really zone in on your unique situation and what you're looking at buying or selling. Because uh, what's going on in the market as a whole doesn't automatically apply uh, to what you're looking at doing. So that's it for single family. Let's take a look at condos. But I do wanna remind you again, reach out to me. If you're looking at buying or selling a home or if you could just use a free consultation to help you get some help, someone to help you point, uh, someone to help point you in the right direction uh, so that you can get the advice uh, and help that you need. I have no problem helping you out. Even if you don't end up buying, I, it's not a waste of my time. This is part of the job. I gotta talk to people find out how I can help you. And if, I, if we can work together, that's great. And if not, that's okay. So reach out to me, 780-819-5508 or go to booktrevornow.com, select the time on my calendar, and then I'll call you. Okay, so let's look at the condo market. Again, it's gonna be a much different here. Absorption rate was sitting at 22.23% which is uh, getting you know decently into a buyer's market. So if you're selling, definitely have to be realistic. It's been like that all year and for multiple years before that for apartment condos, uh, it is shifting down. Um, like I said in previous videos, there was a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel in March when we got up to 37% and it was the first time that we had been in a balanced market for condos uh, technically in a long time. Uh, and then we, you know, had it for one more month in April and then it slipped back down into a buyer's market. I would blame that on the increased interest rates, essentially. Uh, and probably also a lot more inventory coming on the market. We'll get to that next. So if we look at the average price uh, for June, it was sitting at $233,460, which is down 0.68% from May and down 2.41% from June. So average prices are down from last year for condos. If you compare that to the yearly look, you can see that 2022 is actually technically up 3.82% and we were up 3.9% last year. So it's one of those funny situations where you can be down from the June of last year, but up for the year so far, because the year so far is looking at the full year, everything that's sold. Whereas looking at just June, if you look at June of last year, we were actually up that month. So it was a particularly strong month. So it makes this June uh, not compare very well to that. So looking at the, the uh, totals for the year could be a little bit more useful there. Now, if we look at the actual actives and sales, we had 2,492 active listings at the end of June and 554 sales. So the actives are up 4.27% uh, from last month uh, and down just over 20% from last year. So inventory is actually still lower in the condo market compared to last year, which not too bad of a thing to happen there. And the sales are down 6.26% from last month and down uh, just over 2% from last year. So again, still pretty similar to last year, except we got less uh, inventory. Last year, we had over 3,000 active listings and pretty, you know, a few more sales than we had this year. But this year, we had a, about 500 or 600 less listings for, for condos. So it's still, it's still a little bit better than last year in a way. Uh, but there's still a lot of gap in that market, so it's definitely more of a buyer's market. So you, you might continue to see prices dropping in condos. Now for average days on market, we were sitting at 47, which is up. Uh, so homes were actually selling a little bit slower. We were at 45 in May, now we're at 47, and we were at 53 last June. So homes are actually selling faster than they were last June. Now the market distribution for condos, completely different story, really heavy under 200,000, 45% of the market. 33% of the market between two and 300,000, and then 15% of the market between three and 400,000. So you can clearly see once you get over 400,000 and it's a condo, it is a fancy condo, you're looking at less than five or 6% of the entire market. Um, and that's much different market distribution. So I hope this video was valuable to you. If you like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I think I'm sitting just shy of 600,000, uh, 600, <laughs> I wish. I'm, I'm sitting just uh, below 600 or maybe I'm at like 560 or 570 or something like that. Uh, we hit that milestone of the 500 subscribers, now I'm trying to get to, to 1,000. Um, and I really would like to get as much feedback as possible on what you guys need help with. Um, and uh, if you'd like to check out other videos like this, I've got a playlist over here and you can click over here to subscribe. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.